This is another in the range of Sealy's how-to videos, covering the different techniques for restoring damaged threads on nuts and bolts. If you're restoring a classic car or doing DIY tasks around the home, a damaged nut or bolt can be a major inconvenience and cost you valuable time and money. In this video, we'll show the range of tools that are available to quickly restore those threads and get you back up and running. Okay, so the first thing we need to determine is what type of thread that we're dealing with. And to do that, we need to find out the pitch of the thread. So the pitch is the number of threads there are in a given distance, and also the angle of the threads. And to, to find out what it is, we need to use a thing called a, a thread gauge, which is what you can see at the back of this kit. This is a, uh, a basic tap and die set. Um, it's designed for metric fixings, which is what you find on most modern cars, certainly built over the last 20 to 30 years. Um, if not, if you're looking at older, older vehicles than that, you need to be looking at probably Imperial taps and dies, which are available as well. There are a few Imperial ones in this set. The bulk of them are metric. Um, and what we've got, we've got two types of, of cutter in here. We've got the dies, which are for cutting outside threads, such as on bolts and threaded rods. And we've got the taps, which are these ones here. And these are for cutting inside threads, so in other words, on nuts. And on, if you've got a, a, a piece of steel with, with a threaded hole in it, that's what you use for those. You've also then got the wrenches, which hold these. So this is the wrench for holding the dies and this one and this one are for, used for, for using on the, the taps. So as I mentioned, I'll show you the, the thread gauge. Right, now I happen to have checked this already, so I, I know the size of thread this is, just to speed things up. This is actually an undamaged thread, but it's ideal to, to show you as an example here. And what we're looking at is finding the teeth on these that perfectly match the threads that you need to repair. And as you can see here, that matches perfectly, no gaps. So I know that this is a 1.5 pitch thread. So it's 1.5, but the next thing I need to work out is how wide this is, what the diameter is. And the same thing would apply if I was doing the inside of this, of this nut. I'd need to find out what the internal diameter is. And I, to do that, I need to use a vernier gauge. And this, in this particular case, this is a digital one. So I'll just turn that on and zero it. And then all I need to do then <clears throat> is open it up and close it on this fixing. And it's showing it's about 9.76 millimeters. So what's happened there to create this bolt, they would have, we round this up to 10 millimeters because it would have been cut from a 10 millimeter diameter piece of rod. Okay, and so I need to be looking for what's classed as an M10 1.5 pitch thread. So then if I look at the set here, that's the M10 1.5 pitch, as you can see there. And all I need to do then is mount that into the, the wrench and there's an indentation on the side on the, on the, uh, the die. I pop that in there, tighten up the securing bolt, just finger tight, it's quite adequate, and that's now held and ready for use. And now we're ready to start doing a repair. Right, so I've now got a, a, a bolt I've damaged intentionally that I can put into the vise to show you how this works. And you can see now, I'll put a, a nut on there and it won't even screw on, it's that, that damage. It jams immediately on the damaged thread. So the next thing we need to do is to put on some safety specs and apply some cutting compound. You can use normal grease, but this is the, the proper stuff of the job. It's uh, tapping and cutting fluid. And the beauty of this, this will cling to the threads. It just makes it a bit easier when you're cutting. Now we mount the wrench, and the important thing is to make sure it keeps it square to the top. So just gently pick up the threads. And then slowly work your way down. 
If you get too much resistance, stop and back off to clear the swath and then start again. You may need to apply some more of the cutting fluid as well. So this is working quite nicely. And all you need to do is run through the damaged thread and out to the other side. And you soon know when it's fine because it gets easier to turn the wrench. There we are, nearly there now. There we are, so that's now passed. We can go back again, turning anti-clockwise. There we are, lift that off. And if we take our nut again and put it back on, it goes on with ease. So the, the thread is now repaired and ready for use again. If you want to restore an external thread, not internals, purely external threads, I've got a damaged bolt prepared in the vise here now, so you can see here how they work. Um, and I'll, just to prove a point, put a nut on there and it immediately jams on the damaged thread. So what I'm gonna do now is use a thread file. It's one of these here. And um, exactly the same as before, you need to find the right size thread. So yet again, there's the markings on there. 1.5, exactly as before. And these teeth then will correspond with the shape and, and distance apart of these threads. Um, and what you get is a, a handle, so you can use either end, put that onto there, which makes it more comfortable to use. And then what I'll do now, just like a, a, a conventional file, I'll file out the damaged sections in the thread and we're ready to go. So I'll get started with that now and I'll show you how it works at the end. So there we are. Just try this, this nut now and see if it's solved the problem. It screws on a little way. A little bit more work to be done on this section here though. It's where the most of the damage was. As you can see, I'm working my way around the thread because of the radius to it. And I'll try this again now. Here we are. And the thread is now restored. So, I hope that's helped. And look out for other guides available on our website and also on YouTube. And uh, thanks for watching.